So what's this um what's this track called right here that we're listening to? This track right here is called Be Strong, you know, a sample from uh Outcast. Uh, the uh, actual intro of um, Criminal, you know, Outcast, um, what was that, third uh, CD? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you know something about yeah. This is uh, Thomas T. Guns Weathers, and this is uh, EMP. What's up, everybody? You know who it is. It's your boy, Bono Crusader, here with EMP, Everyday Life Music and Photography, and I'm with my my boy, my ace, my classmate, Thomas Weathers, aka Tommy Guns, in the building, producer extraordinaire, first out of Orlando, Florida, uh, representing Oak Ridge, Vince Boys, where you at? I hear you, I see you, love y'all boys, um, but yeah, man, we here, uh, with my boy, Vinyl Crusader, you know, and, uh, EMP, um, making it happen. All right, that's good. That's good. So, for those who don't know, that y'all, those who do know and don't know, I'm a real, I'm a real hip hop head, and I, I consider this guy you, one of my, one of my, one of my mentors. You, you know, and it's funny, we're the same age, but you know, what I'm saying I think we had our first encounter in 1993. You yeah. know, you had the, um, you had the. Um, the Black Moon Into the Stage tape. You had, you know, back when when, when Walkman's mm -hmm. still listening to the tape deck, sat down next to you, and I asked, can I listen? You know, never met you before, just asked you, could I listen? And you, and you just gave me your Walkman. And I listened, right. you know what I'm saying? They gave me the Walkman, and I listened to Bla that Black Moon album, that whole lunch period, you know, and I was just, I was just so stoked. I was just so happy that, man, now I got, now I got a partner. I got somebody who loves this hip hop shit, just like I love it. That's right. So, well, my question is, uh, you know, when when did you uh, fall in love with hip hop music? I fell in love with hip hop at a very early age. Um, music in general has kind of been a part of me, uh, especially the, you know the drums, and um, you know hip hop really. You know, got got into my soul. I say early eighty three, eighty four. You know, I was about five, and I just, I just knew that this this new form of music, even at, even at five years old, because it was a different beat. You know, that I was accustomed to. You know, it was different. A whole, you know, a whole different vibe. It wasn't. Like the disco music I used to hear my mother playing, you know, it wasn't the Earth, Wind, and Fire. It wasn't, you know, it was something totally new. You know, heard uh, Sugar Hill Gang, and that was it. You know, and ever ever since then, hip hop has been a part of my life. Uh, very, very close. You know, it's it's been a teacher. It's been you know a comforter. You know, something I can. You know, go back to and and really, um, you know, you know, rely on to to make me happy. You know, hip hop made me happy, just like I'm sure hip hop makes a lot of people happy. So, what are we listening to right here? Now, this is a track I had for my man uh, FP the Freshman called "Right on Time," uh, which was the name of his first mixtape. Um, you know, based loosely off of uh, "Back to the Future." Um, really dope MC out of Brooklyn, New York. Uh, currently living in Orlando, Florida. All right. Yeah. So my uh, my uh, my next question would be, how much was your? Because you mentioned the records that your mom was playing around the house, and you know, and it probably you didn't know it at the time, but it you know had a found effect on you as far as not even just hip hop, just appreciating the music in, in general. Just talk about briefly, you know how you you know, musically, how did your parents, your mother, your grandmother, your aunt affect you as far as, you know, music being played around the house when you, you know, when you were just crawl, crawling? You know what? I was always one of those kids who, you know, because my, you know, my mother and grandmother, they used to throw a lot of house parties. And I had an uncle who dj these house parties. And of course, being a young kid, you're kind of 
pushed in the back room. Don't come out, you know, when I got company. But I would always sneak out and go near the DJ equipment and go through the records. And that was my first introduction at five, six years old to music. And seeing how it made people feel and how it affected people's emotion, even at a young, even at an early age, you know, I I seen that effect, and that's something I wanted to to give to people, you know, that feeling of of just joy, you know, hearing hearing your favorite song come on, hearing you know something new for the first time that you never heard of, you know, just a whole universal feel of music, you know, it's. It's that, you know, theme that, you know, gravitates, you know, toward everybody. And it, you know, grabbed me very early. Okay. So I want to touch, I want to touch on the, um, it's a, uh, a two-part question, we'll, but we'll, we'll delve off into the first part first. Just talk to me okay. about that golden era that, uh, of the 90s, that 90s hip-hop era. And um, just talk about the effect that it had on you, you know, how much you appreciate it now that we we don't hear that type of sound anymore and how much we took it for granted thinking that that type of era would always be around yeah that what is what is so funny um i'll bring up a current mc um a young cat in the game who um everybody i'm sure is a little familiar with um I believe his name is Isaiah Rashad. And he said something about, um, you know, 90s hip hop not being important because he wasn't from that era. Um, 90s hip hop is the golden era of hip hop. Everybody says 88, uh, you could say 85, 87. You know, there's, you know, years that were great, but the 90s were the era of hip hop it it took over um and you you just had so much you know you had you know so much entertainment out of hip hop you know you had MC Hammer you had Vanilla Ice you know but then you had the real grimy hip hop that that really molded the impressionable minds you know um you know for instance you had Cats like Snoop Dogg come on the scene with a totally different flow who just, you know, he just grew into a household name. You know, nobody's seen that coming. And, um, you know, and that was a totally different look from, you know, the Native Tongues, you know, and, you know, Tribe Called Quest and Daylight and them, you know, cats, you know, from the East Coast who had another look on hip hop and they brought their own vibe which in the 90s it it really molded what hip hop is today you know uh without a lot of those cats uh really sacrificing you know getting into the industry and everything it really you know paved the way for these guys you know for the music today and you know now we you know are you know in good hands with Kendrick Lamar and J Cole you know, because they were raised on the Jay-Z's and the Snoop Dogs of the 90s, you know. And that, you know, the era is very important, you know. And it can't be understated how important 90s hip-hop is to the culture of the world because it brought us so much, you know. It brought us crisscross, like everybody was jumping. You heard that song everywhere, you know. And it, it made it cool for your, you know, for your kids to listen to. You know, you had your Fresh Prince and, you know, Jazzy Jeff. You had all these guys that, you know, they were doing it for hip-hop in the 90s and were taking it in, in, in different avenues, you know. But 90s molded my love for hip-hop and, you know, in that aspect, you know. It was, it was very important and, you know, to this day, 90s hip hop is is blasted in in my system everywhere. 
All right, we got another track right here uh, from your boy. A little something I cooked up. Um, also something that I'm gonna be, you know, possibly pushing to my artists uh, for his new album. What's that, what's that, you got a name for the track? This track is called 100% Effort, you know, cause it's what you gotta give sometimes and, and everything you do. You know, a little uh, concept track I had. So, second part of the question is, you know, we grew up in Orlando, Florida, where, you know, it's the, I mean, it's, it's the South. And um, back then in the 90s, you know, the Southern guys, they were either into the, the eight ball, the MJGs, which was very good, very good artists, very good albums, UGK, you know, they gravitated more to, to those guys, Scarface, Ghetto Boys, and then, right. and then, and then the West Coast was kind of their scene. And they kind of wasn't really vibing with uh, with East Coast hip hop, and with us, you know, going to school, you know, um, we kind of, I want to say, you know, outcast. They looked at just because we listened to to New York hip hop, they felt that you know that we wasn't proud of being from the South. It felt like we were trying to be New Yorkers, and right. I, and they didn't understand that we just it, it it's just hip hop. You know, we love everything. We don't, you know, we don't love, you know, East Coast more than West Coast. But, you know, most of the things we gravitate to is, you know, East Coast, East right. Coast hip hop. Right. So just, you know, talk to me. How did you deal with that coming up, you know, in high school? What was funny about high school, um, you know, being from the Midwest and moving to the South, my 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 whole taste for music was so broad that you wouldn't know what I was listening to. Like one moment I'd be listening to Black Moon, the next moment I'm listening to Spice One, the next moment I'm listening to UGK, the next minute I'm listening to um, Ghetto Boys, and then I'm listening to you know Tribe Called Quest. It it, it was. It was just funny to me because a lot of people took where they were from serious. And because I was in the middle and we didn't have, you know, much popular artists other than Bone Thugs. You had, you know, cats like MC Breed out of Flint, you know, and that whole movement. Um, and, you know, Common, of course, from Chicago. And you had Crucial Conflict and some of those guys. Um... You know, the Midwest kind of got everything. You know, we got the West Coast, we got the East Coast, and we got the South. So, coming up, I was into everything. And sometimes, I wouldn't admit it because I knew, I, you know, I'd be questioned. You know what I'm saying? So, a lot of my love for, let's say, MJG and 8-Ball uh, would go unnoticed. You know, because nobody else in the crew was listening to them that I knew of. You know, so a lot of my, you know, love for, you know, a lot of the different genres of hip hop, you know, were kind of secret to me, you know, and I would hold that, you know, kind of to myself, you know, um, and, and it was, and it was kind of weird because, you know, I'd be having conversations at school with my boys who love, you know, underground hip hop, who love, you know, Red Man, but... If I brought, you know, somebody like A Ball into the conversation, I'd get crazy looks, you know, like, you know, nobody really understood that at first, you know, until you started to learn, like, now, okay, after Outcast, you know, the South has something to say, you know, and then you got the, you know, Goody Mob came on the scene, and a lot of those guys really made it okay to enjoy, you know, uh, southern hip hop, you know, because it wasn't just dance music anymore. It wasn't just Luke. It wasn't just chant music. It wasn't just, you know, music to, you know, shake your butt to. You know, they had, you know, some real music coming out of the South. All right, this is another track. Uh, this is called Brazilian Feel. You know, a little something that's, uh, you know, different sounding, you know, something that kind of, uh, takes you away you know you close your eyes and you write to the song and you might be with your feet up on you know uh you know on the yacht or on the beach somewhere you know 
sipping some mimosas with some, you know, some nice senorita. When you was coming up, I knew that you were gonna do something. You was gonna do something in music because it was just, it was just in your blood. So, you know, why talk about, you know, what what led you to to pr producing? Well, what it was, it was pretty much a natural progression. You know, um, coming out, you know, coming up as a young boy. Um, Beating on my mom's pots and pans as a you know as a you know a child that was that was my first you know um, you know studio you know the kitchen you know and I'd, I'd be in there making beats on them pots and pans and I I was always able to formulate you know music in my head you know I never you know was able to really read or write music even though I played in you know some concert bands but I was like Nick Cannon like you you play something I could recreate it you know. And that and that was kind of how, um, you know, it just you know kind of gravitated. And as I grew up, um, it just it just kind of transformed into you know trying to get it more technical and really you know get into it more, you know, because it was something that I enjoyed so much, you know, and I wanted to influence other lives like hip hop influenced me, you know, in a positive light. You know, and I wanted to be one of those, you know, positive lights in 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 hip hop that you can look forward to and know that okay, this this guy has, you know, you know the love and the passion for hip hop, and you know he's he's gonna hold it near and dear, you know, and you can, you know, trust in me, you know, like like you could, you know, a Pete Rock or a, a, a DJ Premier, you know. I'm like, all these guys that I grew up in, like, rolled up into one. I'm like, DJ Quick, Premier, Primo, Slash, Pete Rock, Kanye West, Timbo, you know, kind of like a little gumbo, you know. And like I said, being, being from the Midwest, that, that just kind of, you know, how I was raised, you know. Grew up on the funk, you know, Bootsy Collins, you know, straight from Cincinnati. Um, and... You know, music music was in me. You know, so it was it was kind of like a natural progression. You know. So, you with the um, talk about your um, talk about the hip hop scene in in Orlando and 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 touch on your um, and talk to me about the that the crew that that you that you rolling with right now. Bridgeworks Entertainment. That that's the crew. Uh, you know, the label that I'm working with right now. Um, the owner, Barhead Buchanan. What up, homie? Um, you know, owner and uh, CEO of the of the label, former uh, member of Major Stress, uh, who was uh, signed to a very very big uh, hip hop producer R and B, Salam Remy. You know, you may know mm -hmm. him from Nas, Amy Winehouse, Jasmine Sullivan. You know, to name a few. You know, Ballhead was signed to that label. You know, way back in the day with his man CeeLo, God rest, God rest his soul. Um, and you know I'm you know currently working with him and his son you know and Peter Freshman you know first artist off of Brisworks Entertainment, um, and we you know trying to trying to do it big in Orlando you know we're you know independent record label you know who who is you know trying to make moves you know and you know the scene here in Orlando is 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 very dope you know we got some dope talent coming out. It's just, you know, where we don't have very big venues and really big avenues to be seen and heard. So you have a lot of cats who have to move out to become successful. You know, um, you know, like, like for instance, you know, you have, you know, local MC SB, The Anomaly, you know, uh, you know, Collective Music, shout out. Uh, he's, um, you know, linked up after Kara's One came down for a show. Um, you know, that the boys rocked on after that, he's now been torn with Kara's one and Kara's one son, you know, uh, DJ Predator Prime, you know, shout out to them boys, uh, iconic, dope shit, dope, dope music, uh, coming out of Orlando in the Bronx, New York. Um, so yeah, man, look out for Bridgeworks Entertainment, you know, coming to your ears very soon. And um, F. Peter Freshman, uh, you can check out his mixtapes right on time one and two. That is available on datpiff.com, uh, collective music, and all of that. You know, so 
Um, yeah, you know, um, hip hop is alive and well in Orlando, and you know we're gonna you know do our thing. You know, it's a uh, it's very hungry. You know, you know we're very hungry, but at the same time we're you know we're very misguided. You know, not not being in the big city, we don't got you know the hands reaching out to us. You know, looking for major talent. So you know, guys have to you know venture out and you know make their dreams happen. You know, by any means necessary. You know, but like I said, look out for Bridgeworks Entertainment. You know, we should be you know coming out with some you know with some dope material real soon. Uh, look out for Supreme Sound Inc. That's my production company. Uh, Tommy Guns, you know, on the beats. Um, and yeah, hip hop, man. You know, it's it's life. You know. So what show to you know? Let them know your handle, man. Where can they reach you if y'all looking looking for the beats? Man, you can reach me at uh, SoundCloud slash uh, Supreme Sounds Inc. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Tommy Guns. You can find me on Facebook uh, at Thomas T Guns Weathers. Uh, yeah, you know you can find me on Reverb Nation, Bridgeworks Entertainment. Check out Bridgeworks Entertainment on Facebook. Uh, you can check out uh, F. Peter Freshman at Air McFly 21. That's on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, so yeah, man, get at us. You know, we uh, we got that hip hop, that boom bap. We got R&B. You know, we got it all. You know.